Look at that. Hold it right there. Look at it. Why did no, no, no. Why did you roll over it. again? Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. There you go. We're already rolling. <laughs> Look. Behind us. Hold the fucking camera, Carl. I'm trying. I'm kidding. That's how we do it. YouTube, we're back. All right. Uh, we're going to do the ultimate bong sow video today. Um, make sure you're. Yeah, I'm out big, of the way. Big, big mitts on that. Try it. This is behind the scenes. We're a very laid back family here. <laughs> We're doing the ultimate bong sow video today. I want you guys to comment, like, subscribe, uh, hit that thanks button, show us some love. Bong sow is probably the signature best and worst move in Wing Chun because it's depicted as the movement everybody knows, right? If you see the videos or the pictures and the stills, this is bong sow. This is where people say that's what that's what Wing Chun is all about. It's also a movement that people want to see very fast in the in their in their sparring in their context right and if you don't see the movement it's it's clearly not wing chun according to most people i want to define what bong sao is i want to show you what it is in a static form i want to show you how it's applied i want to show you how to discover it itself so christina's going to face the camera you're going to get in your stance you're going to face the camera please get your feet together chamber sink open open tuck your hips forward boom tuck them under there you go. So from this position, I'm gonna have her chamber right about here. The bong sao is in the third section of the form where it comes out from here. Christina's gonna take her right hand. We're gonna do the right hand. You're gonna open your hand to Tan Sao. She's gonna take her energy. She's gonna feed it from her elbow. It's gonna to start to come out. As it comes out, she corkscrews the bong sao out to where it's in this position. Now she's new, I'm gonna correct her. Shoulders turned off, square up your shoulder. Fingers are pointed forward to get where the direction is. This is training wheels. Later on, we tell people don't have any intent in your hand. Some people will say they want their elbow higher than their uh, shoulder. I don't care. I want this, the, the wrist on line with the sternum, not the fingers. So turn your hand off. Good. Keep your elbow right about this level. Shoulder off. This is the fixed position of Bong Sao. All right? She's in this position. Bong Sao, I'm gonna have it come in a little bit more. Boom. It is, if you can see it this way too, Carl, over here, please. It's not at 90 degrees, and it's not at a, at a full, like, what would that be, 180? It's 45 degrees, right? The three key points of the joint you're gonna focus on are uh, wrist, elbow, elbow, and shoulders. This is it. The reason why we teach people to have fingers forward is for an energy sake, right? We don't wanna defeat this structure. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of pressure into you. And I've, we've done this before in energetics on videos. If you turn this, uh, this fingers off, if, where you feel where that pressure's going? Where's it going? My it's into her shoulder, right, anatomically. Now, if you point your fingers right at me, you feel a little bit more structure, okay? And again, I'm not inside of her skin, or you guys have to test this. You have to feel where this is going anatomically into your body. One of the things that people wanna want to be critical of is they think that shoulder movement has no point in the bong sao. Anatomically speaking, that's discoverable upon the energy you're getting, okay? What I mean by that is if you're doing a, a, a lateral movement to the side, your shoulder's involved. You're doing a front raise, your shoulder's involved. The bong sao misunderstood is going to be an application. We're going to get to that in a second and why the shoulder's not in there. But I want you to see off the bat this position where it's at, right? We have shoulders, elbow, and wrist, and it's on height with your sternum. Keep that in mind. This is where a, a bong sao is in a fixed position for your training. So you got to turn it back over to tan sao and draw back in. And in order to train this, you open up your hand, feed it out. Same Cork one. Corkscrew saying it. You'll do five of these. One. Okay. Two, okay, you want elbow bent, 45 degree angle, uh, wrist is on line with the sternum, draws back in, and again, three, draws back in, four, draws back in, and five, good, draws back in, switch rolls, grab that camera, I need Carl, please and thank you. All right, this is where the application of it comes in, right? If I'm Christina and I and every one of us trains to keep it on sternum height at this point, the bong sao, people want this to be a, a technique that will redirect a punch because that's what it's supposed to do. In a static position, if Carl faces me, 
and uh, just you can extend this out to a punch to my face. This is the height where a grown man is going to punch <clears> in my face, but this is where I've trained with Bong Sao. So already we have a problem. Number one, you cannot adhere to the to, to a motion that that the form dictates, right? Meaning we're not going to be slaves of the form. I've said this before. Any weapon that you have in Wing Chun, Tan Sao, Pak Sao, uh, Bong Sao, Gan Sao, is a failed punch. A well-executed Bong Sao is a punch gone bad. A well-executed Tan Sao is a punch gone bad. All of them. All of these movements, we train them on a height with our sternum, but they do, they direct the path anywhere from the top of my head down to my feet because that's where I'm defending. Okay, and we'll get into that later on. What people think the Bong Sao is statically no shift is that punch comes in and i'm and i bong so right some people and i know the comments are going to blow up i welcome the comments type in guys what you want but i'm going to explain this as best i can what the bong so is supposed to be okay is you punch i punch i'm going to get there a little bit faster than you okay we're going to see remember six million dollar man right. we're going to go that pace i punch carl punches Carl is bigger, stronger, faster than me. He gets there. When this force meets this force, elbow down, Carl wants that center line because if your center line's out to the side a little bit more, I'm not even gonna fuck with the bong, so I'm gonna keep coming in. If Carl has the center line, I have the center line, he's bigger, stronger, faster, and he keeps coming in, I'm not gonna meet that force on force. I'm gonna rotate my wrist that he forced me into, which is bong so. That's what the movement is, right? So slow, I punch, you punch. I'm forced into Bong Sao. I still maintain the 45 degrees. Where people get this wrong is, and again, I'm, that's a wrong statement. There is no wrong. There's a forced into a Bong Sao, then there's a you forced into Bong Sao. What I think is incorrect is you punch, and I throw that Bong Sao out. That's got some Lan Sao energy out there, but if I'm forced into Bong Sao, you punch, I'm, I'm letting him push it in there. A lot of things I don't like in the bong sao are, uh, throw a jab out, snap it back, snap it in and out. Go ahead. So again, faster, faster. If I'm trying to do that, there's no point for bong sao. Meaning that why would I throw a movement out when that jab is gone already to be left with my proverbial dick in my hand with nothing out there. A bong sao, again, is post contact. We'll get to that in a second. Going back to the shoulder, say, so if I lift any punches, Push that's, his shoulder. There's no shoulder because he's doing the work for me. My anatomy does not uh, exist to lift it up. Again, but then again, it's going to be height wise. This is why I think Bong Sao is such a failed movement because we look to put it into context. You know, you go to punch me and, oh, look, I'm going to do that. It's just not going to work. I found it, there are so many other better techniques to deflect that punch. You punch in straight, punch in straight. All right, go ahead, punch. You punch in straight. Punch again, punch in straight. I think that's going to be your crucial thing on there. Well, the Bong Sao is not, and a lot of other arts have a similar movement. Aikido's got it. 52 Blocks has it. Uh, light, I know I just screwed that up, so notice I disrespect the light burly. Um, your footwork is crucial, and this is why I think that Wing Chun has the biggest misconception with Bong Sao. Remember, Carl's bigger, stronger, faster than me. In a, we're going to go a slow pace, but in a bigger, if Carl is stepping in with a punch, uh, step in that side, that side, and I Bong Sao, and I step out to the side, my, my anatomy is going to be in a position of, of, a, of I lost center line. Remember I always talked about leading weapon is with opposite foot. So what we train in Wing Chun where you see with the Chum Q form when you have movement is a turn to the Bong Sao. So when Carl punches, I'm supposed to turn and shift. But as we saw in one of the videos I did, punch, make contact and push me over. Okay, so that's what I want, but do faster. I'm gonna try and bong sao with somebody who has aggressive energy and you can knock me right over. I, I go to bong sao, push. It's, it's not going to happen. You, you cannot meet and match that energy at full speed like that based on somebody who is bigger, stronger, faster. The, the object then becomes when you punch and I bong sao to step, it still becomes a defensive move and people wanna see this with an arm that's not gonna be left there. So bong sao is another one of those display techniques where it does apply is the anatomy of that elbow coming forward. The only time I think a bong sao has any relevance is pressure on the wrist. 
So we talked about pressure on the wrist brings up the elbow, pressure on the elbow brings up the wrist. So if you punch in and I bring up, uh, I slap his uh, pox out down his wrist, pop that elbow right up, I got a problem I got to deal with, right? That's the anatomy of a bong sow in post context. What I mean by that again is if I'm gonna punch and you pock, I'm gonna just bring that into an elbow. Is that a bong sow? No, but it's a concept of what the movement is. I don't feel bong sow has any true application pre-context in a fight, pre-contact in a fight. So if we're in a sparring, because everyone wants to see sparring, and you throw out, you know, one, one, two, uh, where's that bong sow, you know, throw out jab, jab on the cross. Boom, boom, boom. Where's that bong sow gonna be? Uh, throw it out again, and then don't, don't, number one, don't take my head off, so stay static. Throw uh, jab, jab, cross. Bong sow there, bong sow there, bong sow there. Any one of these things, you gotta throw it again. All right, so I deflected the first one, but he jab, go jab, jab again. There's my bong sow. I didn't, I didn't do anything again. Let's try it again. No, it, I'm a beat behind the movement. I'm gonna bong and then punch with my left hand. Go ahead, jab, jab, punch. I'm still a beat behind the movement. So you cannot bridge first movement with a bong sow. You cannot do it. But then again, you're not gonna be forced into it when the context of what everybody today, today does is boxing or kickboxing. So I hope this makes sense. Bong sow is a pushed in position post contact. If you're already on top of me and you already, uh, you already have contact made, yeah, bong. Bong can shunt a movement off. Bong is discoverable once contact is made. Wrist grabs, you bong there. There's your Quan Sao. Now bong there again. It's an energy that goes into somebody. So in my opinion, based on the anatomy, the shoulder movement, the shift that's involved, everything else, bong Sao cannot be an opening movement into your Wing Chun. It can be a great display movement. You punch. Here's, oh, there's this, we call this wrong bong. This is also a Quan Sao, right? It's wrong bong because it's on the inside. Because that, then that, there's that problem on that side. We throw a punch. I got to come out that side and go and deal with it. Bong Sao is a beautiful martial arts movement that shows the beauty of Wing Chun in a concept, redirection. You can't fucking apply it in a real fight with speed. And anybody who says they have, I don't believe you. End of story. So post contact, you know, you put your hands on me, you want to take me off for the day, boom. I think it's great. I think there you do have that, kind of hands are up. I think you have that Bong Sao that can come up with that higher attacking energy. Or if I go to put my hands on him and he goes to push me, you know, you put, boom, that's a jump cell, push over the top of me, oh, well, there's my bong cell, because I was forced into it. It's always post-contact. Remember, if it's the boxing context, you know, with the jab and the cross and the hook and all the things, that, that stuff, yeah, you might want to sit there and look at gaining distance and then fighting back with a punch. But if it's pre, but if it's post-contact, you throw a bong cell in there. Oh, uh, and then chi cell too, when we roll, guys, uh, when, you, when I lift, don't let your bong cell collapse. Don't. This is what a lot of us do. We'll talk about that later in the future. Bong Sao collapsing inside of uh, a Chi Sao application. But Bong Sao, get rid of it for your, your context of throwing in a fight. Just let it appear when it needs to be. Hope that makes sense. See you guys in the next video. What? Go. I already had it going. I we know. have to add on to this because Christina <laughs> brought up a great point, which is that she feels like any other person, like all these tactics only work with one art. Yeah. Wing Chun trains for one thing specifically, which is a straight punch. So if Carl and I are faced off and we're square, what do we, how do we start off, right? We all start off squared off, right? At a distance, we can barely hit each other. Hands are up. And then Sifu says, all right, I want you to throw 10 punches. So you throw a punch and I turn the pox out. And then this side, turn the pox out, and pox out. And then Tan Sao, Tan Sao, then Jum Sao, Jum Sao, and then Quan Sao. Quan. Everything is done on what? A center line punch. So it doesn't apply if I'm facing up. Would you throw a hook punch to my head, please? Well, there's no Quan Sao there. Throw a hook punch to this side. There's no Pak Sao there. How about another hook punch? No, 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 no Gan Sao, another punch. No Bong Sao. It all is incumbent upon a center line punch. So again, it's, the whole point is all of these movements are post contact because if you're worried about what the other person is doing, you're already a beat behind the movement. So. When you wind up facing somebody who boxes, who wrestles, who does BJJ, and you're thinking, where am I gonna put my tan out? You lost. We train for other Wing Chun people. We train specifically with that center line punch so that you know how to handle the most difficult thing out there because shortest distance between two points is a straight punch. If you throw a hook punch to my head and I, I got there first, 
yeah, there's a million other things that accompany it, right? Throw a hook punch to my head, I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna put up a defense and I'm gonna step in at the same time. But the fucking bullshit is, is that when you learn how to handle a straight punch, which is the shortest distance coming in, you throw a straight punch, I throw a straight punch. All right, I'm gonna, oh, I've got that straight punch, I'm gonna be able to use that structure. Or Carl's in, I gotta use that turn. When I learn how to handle that straight punch, everything else from every other angle out there is the easiest thing in the world to deal with. So learn your straight punch and then throw everything out the fucking window because your ton, your bong, your jumps out, none of it is going to work because nobody's gonna come up and say, here's my perfect straight punch for you to wind up dealing with. So Christina brought that up, we're adding this on the video for the bong sauce sake, why you shouldn't put it out there and just keep your attack always going forward. Strike first, fuck everything else. See you guys in the next video.